ahead and try it again. No, no, I'm in the middle of the road. This isn't good. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video because Corvette's still broken, right? And if you've been following the series on this car, we still don't know what's causing it. And it's, many of you may have had the same kind of problems. So you might be following this in order to figure out what's wrong with your car. And I'm with you on that. I had to take a little time, had a little fun, had some other cars I had to fix, and stay tuned because I just bought another vehicle. And some of you may like this because it's a fairly common, popular kind of vehicle. But that's neither here nor there. We gotta get back on the Corvette. I want this car running. I watched a video, uh, wanna give credit where credit is due. I watched legit street cars. I don't know if y'all have ever watched that. And he bought a Grand National. And he was trying to drive it home and it was doing the exact same thing. And it turned out to be the fuel pump and I think he eventually changed the gas tank and the fuel screen as well. Now I know the fuel screen is brand new in this car, but the tank had some sediment in it. So the two, demons, if you will, that I'm going to chase today are the fuel filter, which I don't know why I didn't change the fuel filter on this car a long time ago. I just happened to be underneath it and went, that's like really old. So stupid me, it's like one of those oversights, you know, kind of like the rear main on the Gremlin, which that's coming too. I just ordered the parts for it. So we're going to be working on the Gremlin again here before too much longer. But for right now, for you that are following this car, still not running right. So I'm going to go today, and I've got the new fuel filter. Believe it or not, it's not a high-pressure system. Once they went to tune port, they went to high pressure because 85 and up had a high-pressure unit that screws in. This is an inline filter, which, stupid, how hard is that to change, right? So hopefully, this is going to be a really, 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 really short video. This is going to be me pulling out the fuel filter and probably taking a gas bath. She's been sitting for a little while, so there's a half a chance there might not, there's gotta be no pressure in it, because it's been sitting for a little while. But there's probably gas in it, and I'm probably gonna take a bath. I hate doing fuel filters, especially in lines. But, you know, it is what it is, especially when you're on a lift, it all runs down the arm, you know, and gets down in the sleeve, and the, yeah, it's great. So, at least the guy on Legit Street Cars, he was out on the road, so he was under the car doing it, and then, yeah. I'm not doing that because I'm old. I don't want to. I don't want to lay on the ground. I have to do it plenty because I have a small little salvage yard, as you know, and I have to crawl under the cars. But at least it's in the grass. It's not all you know, concrete. It'll give you a bad back. So fortunately for an old geezer, I'm actually in pretty darn good shape because I don't lay on the cold concrete half the time. I bought the first lift. Well, that's irrelevant. Anyway, I use lifts. It makes the lift a lot easier. So if you can afford one, in fact, I had a guy today stop by. He asked about a lift, and he said he wanted to buy a four post. He couldn't decide before two post, four post, two post, four post. Here's my advice. If you only have one lift, get a two post. It, yeah, you have to screw it to the floor. I think they got some you don't have to. I don't know how they do that, but you usually have to screw them to the floor. And if you don't have a lot of overhead space, they do have the floor plate style, so you don't have any overhead, so you can you know use half of it. I think they even have some that only go halfway up. I don't know what you would use that for, but better than nothing, I guess. But two post is a lot better for working on a car because you can get, you can access everything. Whereas the four post, these two ramps get in the way. The reason I bought it was two reasons, one for storage and two for sports cars. Because sports cars, they're hard to get on a two post because they got either side pipes or they've got, they're real low clearance or they have uh, ground effects. 
So sports cars are a pain in the butt to get on a two post, but if it's the only lift you're gonna have, I recommend two post, just way more versatile. Okay, enough about posts, enough about, <laughs> enough about lifts. <laughs> anyway, back on this, let's change the fuel filter, keep our fingers crossed that that's what's wrong. And I'm gonna feel like a moron, which that happens a lot, if this is all that's wrong, but I will be extremely happy and this will be a nice short video. We start on something else. Otherwise, we're gonna end up pulling the tank, pulling the setting unit out of the tank and see if there's a lot of sediment around that. And the tank's about quarter tank right now. I purposely didn't put a lot of fuel in it, and that could be part of my problem. And uh, we'll have to take the screen out and maybe drain the tank. And I saw something on another video where the guy literally just shook. And that's not going to look good, you know. But anyway, he shook it. And uh, it started its own siphon. I've got one of those little... And it takes forever. So i got to try to find one. If any of y'all can tell me where to get that, let me know. I want to buy one. Anyway, that's where we're at. We're going to do the fuel filter first. If that doesn't fix it, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the screen out of the tank, see if that fixes it. I doubt it's the fuel pump, but if neither one of those work, well, actually, we might put a fuel gauge on I'm going to go ahead and change the filter because that's easy. Then we'll put a fuel gauge on it and see if I'm getting my fuel pressure dropping. And if so, then we'll go ahead and pull one in the tank, see if that could be causing the problem, and then we'll go from there. Anyway, keep the fingers crossed. Let's get started. All right, simple 10 milliliter. Take that out of there, drop this down. Why they did it this way, I don't know, but you gotta turn it to get at these screws right here. And duh, I forgot to grab the wrench, I mean the socket. Now I bought this nut driver probably so many years ago that it's older than most, some of you that are watching this video. Not a lot, not all of you, some of the younger group, and I appreciate you younger guys watching, but I find it a lot easier to use a socket because uh, it doesn't slip off than trying to use a screwdriver. You could use a screwdriver, I guess, but they're a pain. They slip off. And for whatever reason, uh, and I don't understand it, because this car doesn't really drip oil anywhere, but there is oil everywhere. And I think I did have some leaky valve covers when I first bought it. And so that's probably why this is just a greasy mess under here. But take that clamp off, and we'll change that. We're going to put these so that you can actually access them when they're on the car. And take that clamp off just push it back there we go Get that clamp back there at least somebody's replaced oh that one's still pretty tight at least somebody replaced these in the past instead of having those crappy ones the dealer puts on there i've seen some of those quick ones the plastic ones and i think they're good but uh maybe i don't know about plastic because it gets old and brittle over time and we'll just take this bracket off. We'll grab the new filter, which again, I don't have it handy. So, oh, it's wait, it's right there. I don't have to shut the camera off. And here, here's a little advertisement for old Napa. Not because they're paying me for it, but just because, I don't know about you all, but we have what they call Filter Friday. And Filter Friday is, let's compare, oh, it's perfect. Doesn't say made in, oh it does, look at that, China. Oh my gosh. But anyway, Filter Friday, you get your filters for half price. So instead of $16, this was $8. And I like $8. So basically what I'm trying to say is, you might wanna wait till Friday. I think another part store I checked was only like $9 and change. So it may not be worth waiting till Friday, but <laughs> just to let you know that they do have a Filter Friday and uh you know if you feel like waiting but now that i think about it it might not be worth saving just a dollar but <laughs> they're not paying me for that i'm just i just like to give everybody a heads up on where to get the best deals uh and, and actually i just ran into this today some of my local parts stores some treat me better than others i mean they're all treat me pretty good but there's one that kind of go out of their way to help me and you know and they they try to give me halfway decent prices and which one should I do? This was the tank side. So let's take the tank side off first so that I can kind of put the other filter on there. Am I going to take a bath? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, look at that. Okay, let's get this one in there. All right, let's pull this one off. Oh, gas in the eyes. Oh, yeah, that's good. Should always wear safety glasses. Oh, yep, that feels good. 
Uh, well, what you can't see is is me suffering. Oh, gas in the eyes. Okay, folks, always, always wear safety glasses. Right? Whoo! Okay, the secret to getting things in your eyes. Get your eyes open as fast as possible. Get some air in there. You don't want to know how I learned that. Okay, I'll tell you how I learned that. I got sprayed with pepper spray several times. Part of my job. So uh, when I get paid, with, when you get sprayed with pepper spray, the best thing to do, get your eyes open as fast as possible and get some air to it. Same with gasoline, onions, same thing. So there you go, you learned a little bit. Hopefully you'll never get sprayed with pepper spray. Uh, it doesn't work with tear gas, but tear gas, once you get out of it, it's, it's much, it goes way a lot faster. But uh, yeah, that's the secret to getting your eyes better fast. Now, if you get a lot of gas or battery acid or something crazy like that, in your eyes well yeah you might want to go flush it with water and all that sort of stuff but I'm a little disappointed to see that whole made in China thing on my on my my Napa gold filter but oh well I guess everything's made in China now not that I got anything against our Chinese friends but it just seems like if you're gonna get Napa gold it should be American made. I don't know, maybe not. Alright, now that one I'm going to tighten up by hand because I do not want that coming off because it's a pointed screw. Alright. And then if we're going to do, like I said, I'm going to have the, the hose clamps pointing that direction. So that I can access them from with the bracket on. That only makes sense to me. That filter, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. That thing was pouring out some nasty looking gas. So we may hopefully, I do say so a lot. Uh, we may be looking at the rate the main problem with this. Uh, and I did pull this end off fast, so I mean first, the fast both. I did both, a fast and first. And I'm not showing you what I'm doing. I'm an idiot. Okay. Sorry. All I did was do the bracket. I'm tightening this up. And we don't want to over tighten it. So that's good right there. Probably just getting a good look at my elbow anyway. There we go. Try that. That's the only thing about this camera angles. It's hard to, without somebody watching the camera for you. I'm actually putting this clamp in a little bit different than I would because that way you all can see it, you know. But the hoses looked okay. It doesn't seem to be... Something don't look right there. It's not. That's not tight. That's weird. It's not tight. Something's, something's weird in Denmark. It's just not, what the heck? Come on here. It just doesn't look right. Get on there. So I'm gonna move the clamp a little bit to right behind the bulb. Well, y'all probably can't see that. But yeah, right here. It's really, worn here and I think I'm actually running out of out of clamp is what's happening. I didn't look at these to see if they go all the way around. I might have to put new clampage. See how it's I don't know if you can see that, but it's kinda rocking weird. And actually I don't think it's tightening at all. You know you can't get good parts anymore. So I'm gonna have to get a new clamp. Dag um Well it couldn't go easy because if it goes easy, it wouldn't be my shop. Well, I'm going to wrestle with this for a couple hundred years until I get it off. And then I'll, uh, this one don't feel good either. But it's tight, though. Yeah, that one's tight. Nope, it's, I don't know, it's tight, though. If this one ain't, I'm going to have to put a new clamp. So, stand by. Well, here's the problem. It was running out of, out of teeth. 
And this one actually broke. See, this one actually stopped, stopped ratcheting. It came apart. So I'm going to go get a couple of new clamps, put them on there, because these just weren't tightening up properly. Now the clamps I buy, they have the little teeth, the little serrated teeth to make it travel on all the way around. So that cannot happen to these. I'm just going to take this one, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take the filter back off because it's going to be a leaky mess. And I don't like wearing gasoline, I just don't like it, okay? We'll just open that up, stick it in there, get her started, you can do the same, same, same. You can see what I'm doing now. Oh, that feels so much better. You'll feel it snug up. You don't want to over tighten because, I mean, it is just a piece of stainless steel after all. So you just kind of snug it up. There we go. Oh, that's much better. All right. That makes, those are my last two clamps. So that means I'm going to have to order some more. You know, I keep running out of stuff. And I guess it's because I use it, right? So if you use stuff, you run out of stuff. And since I'm just sitting here putting a clamp on, I'll tell you a little story. Once upon a time, no, I'm kidding. Well, I'll tell you a little story. I the camshaft for the other Corvette came in. Woohoo! So my big block C3 is going to get her her heart put back in. She's got to get have her heart transplant. What I decided to do, and I'll repeat this in that video, but I'm you know still doing this, so I'm doing this. I'll tell you. I went ahead with a solid lifter cam because what caused the other one to go is they collapsed. Had a couple of lifters collapse and it wiped out the lobes on the cam when the valve wouldn't open. And it might have opened, but it put undue pressure on it every time it tried until it finally broke the push rods. So that was that. I'm going to go ahead and snug this up with a hand ratchet and then we're going to try it and see if it's any better. I almost forget it. Oop. We wanted to see what was coming out of this. This is the out. And it's semi cleanish. That is what's going in. That's not clean at all. This thing weighs pretty, pretty substantial. Let me see. I'm gonna do the unthinkable. Well, the bad news is. bad news is it's pretty clear it blows through pretty easy yep without issue and it doesn't feel broken or collapsed but that doesn't mean it isn't collapsed in there and then when there's fuel going through there she doesn't block off but she doesn't feel that bad to be honest with you I'm a little afraid we're gonna have to go into the tank let's take it for a test drive and see where we're at. This time, I don't have much hope because that filter didn't seem that bad. I mean, the gas going in it was nasty, but the uh, filter itself didn't seem like it was clogged. Guess the proof is in the pudding. Let's take it for a drive. I'm out of the garage and I dare to say it sounds better but I don't know she's warm she's at 150 I'm gonna try the rev test if it doesn't rev well there's no sense in going for a ride so that didn't sound good Sounds 
sounded like about 4,000 RPM. She sounded like. Hear that? She's missing or something. She's missing. Yep. Nope. There it goes. Well, I didn't expect that to work. I guess I could have tried that in the shop. But nope, that didn't do it. So, I guess we'll stay working outside. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. Get in the shade anyway. Alright, and we're going to open the hood. Take a look, see what we got under there. And actually, I don't think the hood's down or anything. So it wouldn't have been a good idea to go for a ride yet. But we want to do the rev test anyway. Going to put a fuel gauge on it and see what's going on. Well, here I am. The, uh, tried the filter, I'm convinced it is a fuel issue because I watched this, the spray on the nozzles start to diminish. Uh, I still have not completely ruled out something in the distributor cap, but it's an HEI and those are like foolproof and it's a, it's only a high rev, it idles perfect. Now it still could be something in spark, but I'm going to chase this demon first. I'm going to take this back out now. There's a whole other video on how to change the sending unit slash fuel pump in this car. So this is just going to be fast forward with music. I don't know how many of y'all enjoy the music. Yet. Nobody ever comments. I had one gentleman. Well, no, I've had a couple of comments uh, complaining about it a little bit. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not really sure if the music... Buy it, but throw me some more comments. I got enough complaints. I guess I'll change it. Uh, but I do, I just enjoy it. I enjoy the music. Like when I watch some of the videos on the car shows, when I revamp on those, I really enjoy the music. So, uh, but maybe many of you may not enjoy that same kind of music. So if you like something different, let me know what you do like. I can't really play mainstream music. And I did have a guy say, how about some 80s rock? A lot of people are sick of 80s rock. Uh, I still like it, but I can't use mainstream music. I have to use stuff without copyright. So if you want to kind of give me some suggestions, I'll gladly do it. Uh, I've seen some videos with country. Well, you know, it's appropriate for some things. This is going to be fast forward because there's a whole other video on this. So you can look that video up if you want to see how to change the sending unit slash fuel pump in this car. It's actually quite easy, but I'm just going to fast forward with music on this one just because you can see how to do that elsewhere. This is more... Let's see if this is causing my poor run problem. My actually not running problem. I can't drive. So the drivability issue. Fast forward, I'm gonna let her go. This wing is gonna make it much more difficult than it was the last time I did it. So the other video is much better because you're gonna get better angles and what have you. Because the wing is definitely in the way. But here we go. was easy wasn't it so now it's time to pull her out of here it takes a little finagling but really it's not not too big a deal yeah it's pretty dirty in here the hardest part is getting this sending unit. Man, what the heck? There we go. Getting the 
sending unit out without damaging it. But that screen actually looks really bad. This is going to be a bit of a chore, but if you can see down in there, there's a lot, a lot of sediment down in that tank. And it's that, it's that black stuff. I tried to pick some of it up with, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the tripod, and I'm going to try to pick some of it up with a magnet and show you what I got here. Got a magnet in here, and I'm just going to, I mean, I can see it moving around in there I can feel it it's like a, a rusty grit and here's my dilemma is how do I get it out of there short of there we go maybe I'll just use the magnet this is what I got if you can see that all of this stuff it's basically rust, I think, but it's black, and if you come over here, let me show you that. You can see it's all over this screen. So, look at that. My guess is that screen is clogged, so I'm going to clean out the screen and or replace it, see if I got another one. I might have another one laying around. And I'm going to try my best to clean that out. I may drain the tank. And that way I can get in there with a cloth. We'll see just how far I go with that. I'm going to try with a magnet first, see how much I can get that way. We'll go from there. I'm tempted to take and just blow through the fuel pump, but I'm a little bit leery about that. Be honest, I don't feel much air. Not feeling much air going through that. really feel much air coming through this but what I did is the old-fashioned way there's air going through it that's a pretty tight little screen and as much sediment is in there I am I'm pretty sure that's what's happening is that sediments get sucked up around the screen blocking it off not completely but enough to make it difficult to get fuel in and uh, and then when you shut it off all of it drops back out and that's why the car will start and run halfway decent sometimes and sometimes not. I've tried it with a magnet and I get a little bit at a time, but in all honesty, you know, Permatex doesn't hold up in gas very well. Uh, so I'm just going to have to drain the tank. That's going to be fun. I'm going to drain the tank. I'm going to use a screen so I can reuse the fuel that's in it. I'm just going to use an old paint filter. And I'm going to run this stuff through the paint filter and into the can and then when I put it back in the car I'm going to do the same thing run it through the paint filter and back into the car so that's pretty much what I'm going to do I'm going to start a siphon and empty the car out I'm just going to use a doubled up paint filter I'm just going to stick it in here so that when I get my funnel going I can stick the funnel going in there and uh, well this one's a little tall now that I think about it but it's probably the only way I can do it so after eating a bunch drinking a bunch of gasoline I've got the tank drained but there's still a little bit in the bottom so I have resorted to this scooping it out with a glass clean glass don't tell my wife but I'm going to show you something because I took out my first scoop of gas with this glass and you'll never guess what I found so we'll, we'll show you
Now, I don't know if you can see that. See that right there? That's the junk that's in there. So I'm going to continue to scoop and scoop and scoop. This is helping to get rid of the, the gas taste. Whew. Went up my nose and everything's terrible. Anyway, I'm going to keep on scooping. Hopefully we get a bunch of the sediment out. Then I'm going to get a rag. And I'm going to wipe the rest of the sediment out. Yay. It's gonna, I'll see you all in mm, about two hours. Not much to see in the tank anymore. It just looks like mud. But there's no more sediment. Well, there is, but very, very little. Clean that out as best I can, other than there's a little bit of mud. And I'm going to probably get a couple more rags, try to soak that out of there. i got a couple of pigs, I guess, I'll use. And uh, not to be mistaken with the kind of, you know, people that, you know, never mind. But anyway, check a look at this. This, let me get out in the light where you can see this stuff. This is what I got out of it. This is literally... Look at this. This is all the stuff that I've... And if you look at these rags that I wiped it out with, look at all, see all that brown stuff? That brown stuff is all of that sediment. And if you look in here, this one shows shiny. So it's some of it's metal. Don't ask me where that came from. But all that brown stuff on these rags... And this is the worst. This is like the first rag I put in there and started wiping. That's all the junk that was in there getting caught in the screen. Alrighty now, now you can see there's no more, no more, no more. It's all, I don't know if I can get the light in there, there you go. You probably can see better than I can. If I can get the light to shine in there at the same time and get you guys in there. Fine. There we go, like this. I don't know if you can see in there or not. But here it is. But it's pretty darn clean. It's not as clean as I would like, but clean enough. This is where the true levity of the situation comes in. Look at that. This is the funnel that I was siphoning the gas through. Look at that. Look at that. Looks like coffee grounds, don't it? Look at that. That's what was in that tank. Just to word I'm looking for, let you all know, it would be very, very dangerous to leave those rags anywhere inside, indoors. Especially if you leave them in a pile, because with all of that uh, gasoline on them, they could self-ignite. They call that uh, spontaneous combustion. Yeah, that's it. We don't want that to happen in here. So I took the rags, and you'll notice I had them spread out on the floor. That's while I was working in here. I'm sure the fumes are pretty heavy in here. So if you smoke, don't be coming over right now. Uh, I put them outside. It's, it's actually, you saw, well, I don't know if I'll include that in another video, but I might show it just, just for the heck of it. But it rained pretty darn hard a minute ago, and it's supposed to rain some more. So I put them out, and I have a pile of scrap metal as, you know, throw junk away. I just pile it up and then I throw it in the back of a truck and take it off to the scrapyard someday. So I laid it out on that and then when it rains it'll soak it all and it'll soak into the ground and help the plants grow. Nope. But we don't really want any plants growing there anyway because it gets all in between my parts and that sucks. So anyway, now we're done-ish with that part of it. The screen, I've cleaned it out with the air hose as best I can. 
I was able to blow through it. That's a pretty fine screen. I didn't realize how fine that is. No wonder the fuel pump, the fuel filter is not really dirty. Uh, so now I'm going to put it all back together. Now here's where I'm kind of at a loss if this doesn't fix it. It seems logical that this would be the problem because that sediment was fine and there's a lot of it on that screen. So it wouldn't take a whole lot to get sucked up in there to, you know, clog it up. And that's my, and it doesn't have to clog it a lot, just enough for high RPM issues. So I'm kind of hoping that we've nailed it and that needed to be done anyway. It was a pain. My arms are, I mean, they're bruised from sticking them in there. You know, I've always, you know, we're guys, right? So we think, you know, we want big biceps. But when I'm doing this, I got my arm all the way in there, you know, and it's, it's, it's tight right in here. And so I'm a little bit bruised up on both sides because I'm forcing my arm down in that hole, you know. So every once in a while, I'm glad I'm not big, right? Because you want to be jacked or everybody wants to be, you know, uh, The Rock, right? Or Vin Diesel. Everybody wants to be them, right? Today, I'm glad I'm, you know, Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Because I can get that. In fact, I wish maybe my arms were a little smaller on that deal because I could have got them in a little bit further. I thought about getting my wife, but her arms are short. So there we go. Uh, sometime, oh, and I've, you know, everybody who thinks they want to be taller, tall guys don't fit in sports cars, folks. I had a couple of friends that wanted to buy sports cars. One wanted a Crossfire, the other one wanted a 66 uh, Cobra. And they, they had the money to buy them, but when they got in them, they can't fit. So, if you're an average size guy, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, be glad. If you're not all that jacked, be glad. You can fit your hand inside the gas tank. <laughs> so there you go. So there's good and bad in everything. Uh, you know, I don't think, you know, The Rock could have got his arm past here, you know, inside that. If he can even get his hand in there, right? Because he's a monster. So anyway, there you go. So there's happiness on all sides of the spectrum. But, uh, you know, at my age, I'm just glad I could stick my and in the gas tank and you know do that kind of thing a lot of people can't so i'm blessed right be glad for who you are what you are yeah i don't know why i'm saying all that just be happy right let's all just get along anyhow start to put it back together back to the music because we've seen this before in another video and uh, we're gonna get this together and we're gonna hope and pray that this was the problem and now it's a little rainy out so we may not be able to give her the gusto but if she sounds good in the in the shop we'll go ahead and back the other cars out maybe take a quick blast at moderate speeds you know less than 100 ish kind of and just to test her out but if she still doesn't rev i don't know what to tell you we're gonna have to keep shopping we're gonna start going we will have to put we'll have to check the fuel regulators i don't think that's it because like i said it runs good sometimes fuel regulator would run bad all the time, right? I mean, it's got a hole in it, it's got a hole in it. And they say if you pull the hose, the vacuum hose off, if it's a fuel regulator, it's leaking fluid, you know, gas, and that would make it come out the vacuum hole. So I did that and nothing was coming out. So I don't think that there's a problem. I don't think the regulator's a problem because they're just a little diaphragm, you know? Just like a throttle, I don't know if you've ever taken a Holley carburetor apart and they've got that, you know, uh, I can never think of anything when I'm talking. Uh, the accelerator pump, that little diaphragm, that's pretty much all there is. There's a little spring in there just like just like that uh, for the fuel regulator. And that fuel regulates the pressure it allows to go into the throttle by and la di yada 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 I think, I hope, I pray that this was the problem. And if not, we're going to start chasing spark monsters. And I really, really, really don't like to take defeat. Uh, in fact, I almost refuse. I may have to talk with some people that know more than I do. I might have to bring it to a buddy and let him take a look at it. But if this doesn't do it, you know, I've thought about, hey, let's just throw a carburetor on it be done with it. And a lot of people do that. <sighs> Don't want to do that. It's a crossfire injection. Now, I can always keep it and put it back on later and all that. But, and if it turned out to be an electronic nightmare, well, yeah, I may go that route. But I don't think it is because it's not throwing a code. Perfectly, this is it. We'll find out. And if it is, then you all know what to look for in your car. And I'm going to probably keep chasing this monster, even if this isn't it. Just because I don't like to give up. It's against my religion. It is, it is. 
So all this is being said, and hopefully it'll all be in vain because it's going to run good after this. Right? moment of truth folks I'm gonna back her out in the yard try revving her up a couple of times I don't want to rev it in the shop because of all the fumes if you know what I mean so we're gonna back her out see if she'll rev in the driveway if so we're going for a ride Keep fingers crossed Can't help but be a little anxious. She's feeling a lot peppier though. So maybe, maybe we licked it this time. She does feel a whole lot better, idling better. In fact, she's idling at seven. She usually idles at five. So maybe, here we go, folks. Moment of triumph or the agony of defeat. And, uh, I had enough defeat with this car, so it's about time for a little goodness.
full confident here, but she's not fully warmed up either, so. But way better than it was. So, let's go ahead and try it again. No, no, I'm in the middle of the road. This isn't good. Best she's run in a long time. But she stalled in the middle of the road. Nope. And there it is. <sighs> Not happy. The agony of defeat. In fact, well now I know what it's not. Weird. Very weird. Nope, there it goes, just died on me. Well, that tank needed cleaning anyway. <laughs> Golly, well, I guess we're going to start chasing Spark next time. Man, it went for one good little blast. It's too late in the day for me to go chasing anymore. So I had a, I had one of my subscribers suggest we check Spark. So that's going to be my next chase. I could put... It could this could still be a fuel regulator too. Uh, I couldn't. I, my plan was to put the fuel gauge down uh, by the filter, but that was only going to tell me if I was having problems getting fuel delivery from the tank. I need to put it up where the regulators are, or just take the regulators apart, and take a look at them, see if they're leaking. But uh, I'm going to check Spark next. A couple of things that are common with these cars, for whatever reason, they tend to break the a little doohickey that sticks down in the cap. I don't know why. I've never seen that happen on an HEI, but it does on this one. I've replaced two. And, uh, so that could be it. But, that's gonna have to be another day, folks. So, another failure. Daggum! Unbelievable. Oh, oh she's gonna stall. Anytime I try to give her any fuel. Which would tell me is the TPS, but it's not. We replace that. And it's not throwing a code. And the TPS would throw a code. Man. Happiness for a moment. And then it just 
went south. And not in a good way. Another failure. Dang. How many times can we fail before we give up? Nope. Don't give up. Failure is not an option. I'm stubborn. Can't be a lot left. We have two other things to check, and unfortunately I do not have time today. And like I told you all at the beginning of this video, I bought another vehicle. And, uh, supposed to get the title for it Wednesday and so I'm going to have to go get it Wednesday and that is going to be will it run and drive it home judging by my luck I'll probably better bring a trailer <laughs> but I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to do a will it run and will it drive home video and uh, it's gonna be my first for one of these I've got will it runs but I usually do them in my backyard. This one, it's in a garage, so it's a good size garage. So I'm gonna bring a few tools. I'm gonna try to get it running. So for those of you who like Will It Run videos, this is the video for you. But I've gotta do that. Uh, I've got, I sold another car and the guy's coming to pick that one up. So I've got to low, help him load that one. I've gotta go get the other one. So the odds of me getting to work on this car pretty slim. Now, if it turns out to be the fuel pressure regulators, they're about 70 bucks. I already priced them. I've got another engine over here with regulators in it, assuming those are good. Uh, I am going to have to put a fuel pressure gauge on it because maybe my fuel pump's going bad, you know, after trying to suck through all that dirt. It, I feel better with all that dirt out of the engine, I mean out of the tank. It was a lot of work and didn't fix anything, unfortunately. But I got some pretty cruddy stuff out of there. Now the fuel is pretty low in it, and so maybe she's sucking air, but it's still quarter tank, so it shouldn't, nope. That's not right if that's what's happening. Uh, so we're gonna check Spark. We're gonna go ahead and hit the distributor next week-ish, or the week after, I don't know. And we're also gonna maybe take apart the throttle bodies and check on the fuel pump regulator, I mean the fuel regulators. Oh, if that doesn't turn out to be it, and it's not throwing a code, I'll be a complete loss. And I will have to bring it down to my buddy and see if he can't shed a little light on this thing. Man, I'm really disappointed. I thought we had it. I mean, it ran, it, you heard it, it revved beautifully a couple of times. Took it for a ride. She sputtered a little bit, but that could just be a learning process. But now it completely died in the middle of the road. Oh my gosh. And uh, then it, didn't, it did the same thing coming back. Bad, bad mojo. Ah. I know there's at least one of you out there that is a certified mechanic. I know you don't do it anymore. And I don't want to say Leonard's name, but help! <laughs> but maybe there's some other certified mechanics out there that might be able to shed a little light on this thing. Uh, maybe somebody that owns a C4 that's gone through this before. I know this is probably the video everybody's watching because you've had I've, I've read a lot of forums people have the same issues with this car so by the time we're done we're gonna cover everything that could possibly go wrong with this car uh, I'm gonna feel stupid because I did have a subscriber say to check the spark and check the distributor and the module and I'm gonna feel pretty stupid if that turns out to be what it is because he said when they warm up and this time it ran good cold it's when it warmed up that it started having problems so but he might be right maybe it's the module I'm going to check the, the uh, little doohickey. The coils almost never go bad in these HEIs, but again, it could be the coil. I've got another, I've got spare parts for all of this, so we could try new parts and see if that's what we got. But unfortunately, another fail and another week of uh, trying to scratch our heads and figure it out. But we're going to figure it out. We're just going to. I've got my cars packed in here like sardines because the last time it started raining we got hail and I'm trying to avoid any damage. Kremlin stuck outside didn't have room because I got a truck up on the rack and if you've watched any previous videos then you're going to know what that truck is. I figured since it's raining and I'm stuck in the shop for the moment I'm going to go ahead and pull the cap off of this car and see if maybe we don't have 
some spark issues since we're stuck in here anyway. So, sorry about the rain noise. It is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and pull the cap on this Corvette and see if any of our I'm not going to lie. I hate working on cars and it's pouring out because I got to turn them all into the shop. And, uh, it's cramped. I need a bigger shop. But, that's what I got. So, anyway. Something you need to know about these two fours. The, uh, oh, that's not these cap, these uh, coils, if you don't take the coil out before you pull the cap, you will break that little nib in there every time. So, this is something you need to clear. My Sorry, I'm messing with... Oh, it's reverse. What the heck? Okay. Anyway, now the rain stops. Nope. I lied. But take this little out. Take this, this little screw out. Pull this cap off. We're going to pull the foil out before we pull the cap off. Because otherwise, we will break that little doodah in there. And that little doodah may be my problem right from the get-go. They sure didn't make these user friendly when they put these in here. Because you can't hardly get your fingers in here to, ouch, to do all this. There's some little clips over here you gotta undo to get your to get these wires off of here. And you gotta push down on these wires. There we go. Get all that out. Put fingerprints all over my windshield. Need to clean it anyway. I don't know, I just washed it. Oh well. Now the number one thing that can go wrong with these is, like I said, that little piece of carbine or whatever it is in there. They break. The second thing is the module. The fact that it's running at all makes me think that the module is okay because usually they just go bad. Something is really hammering on my side wall here. I'm going to have to go trim some trees tomorrow when the weather clears. But the weather is absolutely nasty out there. What the heck? I don't know about this weather man. I'm just gonna stop listening to him. Oh, yeah, I already did. Make sure you unplug your battery before you do all this, because you don't want to accidentally short something out. Alright, and the other one is just a ground. 
Sometimes it'll circle on some of the older ones. It'll circle up and go over here, but in this case, it does not. So we're just going to pull the coil up. The coil looks good. I'm going to pull this out. This was my number one concern, and nope, it's fine. Now the fun part. This particular car, they did not put this cap in a place that was easily accessible. You just gotta kinda I don't think I put this rear one on here because it's so hard to get to. But anyway. Assuming I have enough play on the wires. Yep, there we go. Everything looks good. Unfortunately, because if I saw something obvious, that would be wonderful, but I don't see anything. So. Like a spider web of wire in here. Come on, there we go. Get this out of the way. Sure. Now it's probably right in your way, right? Next, we have our coil here, other parts here. That rotor doesn't look too bad. It does have some grease on it. But that's kind of not a bad thing. Oh, silence. Only the rain that the weatherman said wasn't going to happen let up. All right. Well, there's a lot of dust and dirt on there. Okey so nothing obvious there, no cracks. A lot of times if you look underneath the rotor, you'll see up in this area, you'll see where you can see the fire was jumping through it. And this does not have that, so we know that that rotor is okay. I'm going to go ahead and change out this module. I have another one on the shelf. Well, not really on the shelf. I have one from another car. And I'm just going to swap it out. Because maybe this module is getting hot. Now I'll either get the same, hopefully a, either a different problem, if the other module is bad. Because I don't know if the other module is any good either. It's just on another engine. But if, if it works, I'll go ahead and buy a new one. And we'll go from there. And here comes the rain again Falling on my head like a tragedy Falling on my head like a new emotion <laughs> Okay, so in a rhythmic I'm not Alright, there we go But, now Pull the module up, there we go And then she unplugs you know, it's really, they designed this car, I guess in some ways it's better than others, and in some ways it's worse, because I can get in here and straddle this tire, get in here a little better, but if you had big legs you couldn't, so I guess we'll call it better in my case. Plenty of grease on there, so that's not the problem. Let's see if I can get this come loose now. This one has a little clippy. I have to pop fry back to get it come loose. And she's being stubborn. Wow. 
this is two separate plugs. Neither one of them wanted to come out. Yeah, okay. So there's the module. This one has plenty of grease. That's one thing too. If this gets dry, they'll burn out. This one looks good. I got the test module and I got some dielectric grease. And the reason we got dielectric grease is because I'm going to clean all this old grease off of here and I'm going to put some fresh grease on it. Right. And I'm going to put the grease here because if I put it on this what's going to happen is I'm going to get like super greasy trying to put this all together. So first things first is I'm going to go ahead and plug these two back in. Plug that one in. Those two are on there. So now I'm going to tuck this out of the way. I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on my fingertip. And I'm just going to spread it on here. You don't need a lot. You don't need to cake it on there. Just a little film. got to be the noisiest duck I have ever owned or seen actually. All right, so now we're going to take this and we're going to plug it back into this one, which is a pretty easy endeavor because this one is slides in pretty easy. And we got this weird cover here. This had grease on it too and I'm not sure it's supposed to. I guess this is a heat shield of some sort because it gets hot under this hood. This engine runs very, very warm. It tends to run at about uh, 200. And... I probably had this position in the wrong place, but I don't want to change it now. It runs at a little over 200 degrees. At 200 and was it 238 degrees the fan comes on that's pretty pretty warm so okay so now we got to get this cover to cooperate there we go I suppose I better put my spectacles on I can't see dilly Gonna come back a little bit. What the heck? I think I got this on wrong. Because the holes don't line up. Oh, yeah, that works better. <laughs> it's idiot proof. Yeah, that, that's a lot better. Alright, well, idiot proof is good. Because this idiot was about to put it on backwards. I don't know that it would have made any difference. It's just a shield. But it almost seems to me that this would dissipate heat faster if it didn't have that on there. But they put it there for a reason, I'm guessing probably for heat. Alright. Oh, it's pretty close to tight already. I'm just going to finger tight them. I don't want to torque them down and crack something. Just finger tight them. Alright, make sure that's in there but good. Get our wires are on there look good okay then we're going to do the exact opposite of what we did now I did clean off the button on this it had a bunch of grease on there and uh, cap doesn't look damaged in any way oh oh Ooh. I changed my mind the cap looks terrible yep don't tell me that that was the problem all along. The cap look, looks... What is that? The cap has a bunch of gobbledygook on it. 
weird. But it doesn't... It may have been affecting something. So let me clean that up a little bit. And uh, see if that doesn't help. I right, got the rotor back on, sort of. Got it sitting there. Just going to tighten it down a little bit. Snug that down. Don't want to over tighten that either. It's plastic. I actually did swap the coil out as well. Well, I haven't yet, but I'm going to. I got another coil as well because I just want to eliminate any possible issues here. But you see how fantastic that cap is to get lined up here? That's why you always put your little. Take two, this time without the battery on the camera dying. I like the worst luck with batteries, anyway. But yeah, you gotta get this cap situated in here. Because she is a home dinger. Make sure you ain't got no wires caught up or anything like that. Let's see. That wire. That's the main wire. Where's the other one? Nope, that's a big one. That's a little in. One more. There it is, hiding down there. Yeah, see? This is... I don't know, couldn't they have set the engine just a little bit further? You know, okay. There we go. Now she's on there. And hook your, in this case, three of them, because if you try to get that last one, you're going to be making up some new words. All right. That feels pretty good to me. All right, now we get our little doohickey here, which is, looks good, it looks to be in good shape. The little graphite, whatever it is, doohickey. It's a doohickey. Doohickey is a technical term. Uh-oh. And now I dropped my rubber washer. That's just great. <sighs> and it went into the abyss, no doubt. Or did I move it so that I wouldn't drop it? Yep. Well, I had it sitting on this coil. And then it fell and went God only knows where. Well, <sighs> might have to make this take three. Oh, wait, I think I found it. Ah, there it is. Jeepers, girl. All right, make sure that's clean. Talking about this little washer here that goes over the top. And there we go. And then when we stick my coil in here, got to get these wires all out of the way. Put my coil in. Gently. My connections in here. Come on. They don't want to cooperate either. There we go. go those in put my screws in I hope and pray I didn't see anything wrong with this to say this was the problem however it could have been the module getting hot which you can't really tell by looking at it. So if that was the case, this should fix my problem. I sure hope that's what it is, because otherwise I am completely at a loss. And I'm going to have to go check fuel regulators will be my next step. And if I, that doesn't do it, 
I'm going to bring it to a buddy of mine and see if he can figure it out. And then if he can't, unfortunately, nope, I'm not even going to say it. I'll bring bad karma. But we're going to find what the problem is and we're going to finger it out. Yes, sir, we're going to finger it out. All right. Now, got these two. Got a wire in the way. There we go. Get that out of the way. Put this big one in first. Big one goes in the back. Oops. Man, they just don't. Either they, whoever made design this car had little bitty hands. There we go. Pop this neutral, this ground up a little bit. There we go. All right, now I put the back one on first, and it went into the abyss again. There we go. This brown one, which keeps wanting to fall. Jeepers, trouble. Goes on the outside. And this little white one. Oh, wait a minute. Am I telling you wrong? No, the white one goes on the back. I'm just making sure I didn't have a brain fart. I don't think they'll go in anyway because they're. There we go. The way they're designed, they only go in one way. Again, making it idiot proof. I like to use that word idiot proof because I get forgetful. And I tend to be an idiot. And some people will agree. I had a guy comment the other day saying, Don't tell this guy you like his video because he was steering you the wrong way. Because I showed them the wrong way to do it. And proved to them, showed them just like this, that it's actually idiot proof. That if you think, if you're afraid to do it because you're afraid you might do it wrong, I was showing that you can't do it wrong. And this guy found that offensive and thought, you know, that I was showing people wrong and he's going to blow stuff up, he said. But anyway, won't blow stuff up because it's idiot proof. The plugs will only go on one way. So, here we go. Now this is a cover, it's supposed to have a little tail on it. And it doesn't so this one only has two and you can't get at that one well I guess you could yeah I guess I could so I might just go find another screw and put that on the right way that pretty much gives us uh oh uh oh uh oh I there's a wire hanging here doing nothing well, I'll be dipped where does that wire go that could be a problem. Unless it just always went to nowhere. It goes to the tack. It's plugged in right here. I don't know if that's... It doesn't look like it's been plugged in in a very, very long time. But it's disturbing when I find things unplugged. But alright, she's back together with a bunch of new old parts just test parts if you will I may go ahead and rebuild on that if everything if she's better now I'll go ahead and buy all that stuff new and replace it uh, with new stuff but I don't know I'm a little scared but I'm gonna start it right now give her a couple of revs before I go putting things back together and we'll go from there but uh, man, oh man. all right Let's see if she'll run.
not the first time she plays possum. Sounds good. She's revving, no problem. But she's cold right now. But it, it idles rougher than it did. <laughs> so I don't know what I did to make it idle rough. But she's idling rough, but she's revving. So maybe something in that cap, maybe that module was getting hot and breaking down. Maybe the coil was weak. I don't know. But as of right now, she sounds okay. So I guess we're just going to take it for a ride and find out. It's wet out, so that's going to be fun. We can't really get on her too much, but we'll take her for a ride. Hope for the best. All right, here we go. Test drive number 372. running rougher but better if that makes any sense she's not idling very smooth Ooh, close over there so if this makes things better then I will get new stuff new module new cap rotor I'm gonna get new everything just go through the electrical system on this thing new module if this works Failure number 372. So that wasn't it. Well, I reckon the next thing... The next thing is going to be... The fuel pressure regulators. Oh, she don't want to run at all now. It feels like she's running out of gas. I didn't think it was going to be that simple. Well, we're just going to add this to the last video. <laughs> so we've tried everything that I can think of. So, fuel pressure regulator, maybe is the next step. with this rain. Jeez, bro, enough, enough. How much water do we need? Anyway, another failure. So far, we have changed almost everything to do with fuel, and now we've changed everything to do with spark. No change. So, we're looking at fuel pressure regulators and or water and gas. You know, I... I probably should have, when I changed on the gas, when I pulled all the gas out of that tank, I probably should have put fresh gas in, because, eh, it could be going through all of this because there's water in the tank. I didn't see any when I was at it, but, uh, I may go ahead and fill the tank up and see if that doesn't do it. Uh, maybe put a little bit of dry gas in there, see if we can't fix it better. Because she is getting pretty low on gas, so that would be stupid. Stupid. Stupid, if that was the problem. But I'm running at my wit's end, so I'm going to try the pressure regulator, I'm going to try putting some gas in it. 
And there was something else I was just talking about that I could try. Uh, what was it? It's coming to me. It's coming. It came. The computer! Right? It's got a computer in it. Obviously a crappy one. But, lo and behold, I got another one. I have a parts car. <laughs> so, I'm going to try to put gas in it, because that's a simple fix. In fact, I might try the computer before I go chasing on the fuel pressure regulators. Because I tested on those, and they seem to be okay. And it works good sometimes, and sometimes not. If the regulators were bad, you would think they'd be bad all the time. So, we might try the computer next. But as far as this video goes, it might be over. I don't know. I might try the computer tomorrow, and that way we'll continue this one. So is this going to be, a, be to be continued? No, it's going to rain tomorrow. All day. So it's not going to be. This is going to be it. Because we're going to edit this one tomorrow since I'm going to be stuck in the house. But because the other car is outside and it's got a bunch of crap inside and I got to take all that crap back out, put it outside so that I can get in it to find the computer. But yeah, we're going to try the computer and uh, we'll, because that's a plug and play, right? Pop that out, plug the new one in and done. We're going to try that next. It's nice having a parts car. Let me tell you, I got to quit selling stuff off it. Um, I would never have sold a computer because I know that can go bunky. But if that's good, I and mean, if that turns out to be the problem, we will send this one out to get it rebuilt and or find another one, new one, if they make them. But it's going to have to be in 82 to 84. And how many people know there was no such thing as an 83 Corvette? Raise your hand. Yeah, there's no such thing as an 83 Corvette. So 82, they had Crossfire. They skipped 83 for the new design because they couldn't get the C4 done in time. Then in 84, they came out with the Crossfire again, but in the C4 design. Then they realized that it was crap, and they came up with the tune port. That came in all the rest of them. And then, of course, they started putting the LT1 and blah, 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 blah. But if you got one of these first, 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 you know, C4s, it's a little hard to find parts for them. A lot of the other stuff interchanges, but if it has to do with the crossfire, you got 82 to 84 is it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and conclude this. So I was going to call this one on its own, but since I haven't edited the other one yet, this will be included with the whole fuel system revamp thingy my bobby. And then I guess the next time we got two more options, or I'm stumped, and that's going to be... The computer, you know, wiring stuff, great, uh, and fuel pressure regulators. Those are only 70 bucks. A new computer is probably a lot, but I've got one, so we're going to try it. Fortunately, I've had a parts car, and we've been able to flip parts, so I didn't wasn't spending money all this time. So that's awesome. Anyway, it's the end of this. Please subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked it. it makes me feel happy and warm and fuzzy inside. Share it with your friends. See ya!